Secretary Analyst, retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell, although it's a very complicated situation and nobody predicted events, or certainly no one I've heard of predicted events uh, at the weekend. Um, what has been the result in, in Ukraine on the front line? Has anything fundamentally changed? The short answer is no. Uh, at the moment, the last week, before, we've had seen a sort of quietening down of efforts on the front line. What looks like was happening was Ukraine was probing the front line all the way along the front line to see where the Russian defences were weakest. They've now consolidating, reviewing the plans, reviewing what they do uh, next. So one area where they are making advances around Bakhmut, Ukraine are pincering to the north and to the south of the city. We've been talking a lot about Bakhmut before. It's not, it's, it's highly symbolic and almost certainly the Ukrainians are doing it to try and drag Russian forces in to protect that city. But apart from that, it doesn't look like the Ukraine main assault has yet started. They're retaining their majority of their forces for the days and weeks to come. So that's a short-term situation. Um, Long-term, what are the implications of, of this attempted rebellion? Well, it's interesting. In the short term, um, the fighting, I suspect, the soldiers on the front line will simply be pointing their rifles forward. They'll be scared to death about the Ukrainian offensive and they'll just be worried about themselves. If we go to the top of shop, though, from Putin's perspective, despite the narrative today of business as usual, he will have been shaken. He'll have been shaken by the fact that forces can come halfway up the M4, not to Bristol, but to Moscow, and potentially threaten him there. Uh, and, that's, and his number one priority, Putin, will be to maintain control of power. So, undoubtedly, one of the things he probably considering doing is rebrigading his priorities. In other words, strengthening the, the defences of Moscow up there. And the way to do that is to potentially take some forces away from the Ukraine reserves to actually make sure that they're available. That would have an impact. The other thing that we're going to see is mercenary groups. They have delivered success for Russia on the battlefields, notably Bakhmut. But as we, and here's the, when um, Evgeny Prigozhin's team were in Bakhmut. But the harsh reality, they've now become a threat, those groups. So trying to assimilate those into the main military is undoubtedly one of the priorities 1st of July, the date when that was meant to happen. That sounds simple, but the last time that tried to happen was in Sudan, when the serving military and the rebel group were trying to be amalgamated. That led to civil war. It's a long way away from being a settled uh, solution for there. Finally, though, I think the one thing that will be impacted for both sides is morale. Russian forces on the front line will have seen Yevgeny Prigozhin, what's happened to him, a collapse of their command and control system, and it'd be really interesting to see um, what, that, uh, what effect that has. Ukraine's confidence will have risen, and meanwhile, President Putin, for the first time since we've been talking about this, a sign of a weakness, which will have been a surprise to the Russian people, a surprise to the Russian military, but probably a surprise to Putin himself. Yeah, of course. And, and Prigozhin in Belarus, although we haven't physically seen him there, what's, what's the implication there? Again, we don't know what's happened here. What we do know is Prigozhin was on his march up to Moscow and then something dissuaded him from continuing. Um, he tr apparently tried to call Putin several times. He wouldn't take his call. Apparently, Lukashenko then, uh, over a period of series of calls, probably started to tell some truths to Prigozhin. You're not going to make it. Your family's probably now under threat. Your business interests are in threat. You will not will not win, and whatever he did, he offered a way out for Prigozhin. We still don't know the terms of what that might have looked like. Um, some suggested that actually this is part of a Putin plan to get him pre-positioned so that he could then attack Kyiv. To be brutally honest, there's a lot easier ways for Putin to get Prigozhin into Belarus than actually suffering the fall of fate with all the damage. But whatever happens, I don't think we've heard the last of Prigozhin or his Wagner group just yet.